earthquakes today. More than 550 earthquakes rock California and Nevada in 24 hours. This is after the five magnitude quake that we had yesterday in the Ridgecrest area. We'll have a, a deeper look into where those earthquakes are because they're rocking all the way down to Salton Buttes on the west, which is basically on the southern part of the San Andreas Fault. Now, uh, this is obviously an area which is volcanic in the causal volcanic field. And we've recently found from studies and what the geologists have revealed concerning the magma plume that is found under this area, stretching from Mexico all the way through Southern California, depending on the depths of the magma plume, it goes under the Casa Volcanic Field, up towards Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano, and then turning towards Yellowstone. That is the same body of magma. That's why in the past we've had those unexplained earthquakes in Ridgecrest, for example, the one that took place 20 years ago of a 7.1 magnitude, a couple of weeks later we had an earthquake swarm in Yellowstone. Because the fact is that the geologists have revealed that it's the same body of magma underneath Coso, underneath uh, California, extending under Yellowstone, which is about 500 miles northeast. So now this I, th I believe it's more than 550 quakes, depending on uh, when your 24-hour period starts, because they're still ongoing. Earthquakes continuing to rock California, some also shaking Nevada. More than 550 quakes hitting in the two states in less than 24 hours. This is by Georgina Laud of Express UK, according to what the USGS reveals to us. Uh, the uh, California-Nevada staging staggering 578 quakes in a, a time frame of less than 24 hours. Of these, 11 struck in Nevada, so that leaves 567 hitting California. The highest magnitude to hit was a 5, before that 2.5 in Nevada of Tonopah. Okay, now in California, the earthquakes appear to be concentrated, as we know, around the Little Lake area, which is just north of Ridgecrest. Basically, Ridgecrest is in the course of volcanic field, clustering of hundreds of earthquakes seen on the U.S. Geological Survey maps. The largest quake to have hit California these past 24 hours was a magnitude 5, and then it had a, an aftershock of 3.5, and a little bit after that of 4.2, and it's just piled, they're just piling onto each other striking 18 kilometers east of Little Lake. Now, this struck at about 1.40 p.m. local time. There were no immediate reports of injuries, but it was felt up to the outskirts of Los Angeles. Now, the second largest quake hit at a magnitude of 4.3, 19 kilometers east of Little Lake, and uh, it hit at 10.42 uh, p.m. It had been preceded by the 3.6 magnitude a couple of hours after the 5 magnitude. The earlier quake hit, as we said, 19 kilometers east, southeast of Little Lake, California. The recent quakes, of course, hit close to the area where the very strong magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck on July 5th, Thursday, after the uh, uh, Friday after the July 4th, Thursday quake of 4.6, was, which was obviously a foreshock of the 7.1. Now that huge quake, cracked buildings caused fires from the gas leaks. It split roads, causing severe uh, several injuries. Seismologists warned large aftershock were to be expected to continue for weeks, if not months. So here we go. This is one of them. The July quake was preceded by the two large earthquakes, magnitude 6.4 and 5.4, followed by smaller aftershocks. And California, as we know, is no stranger to earthquakes because it's in the, in the, on the subduction zone, on the ring of fire. 
And uh, we are expecting, of course, the San Andreas, southern San Andreas in the Los Angeles area to give a big earthquake. As we know, the San Andreas picks up 75% of the subduction pressure from the subducting Pacific Plate under the North American Plate. 75% is picked up by San Andreas, and the other 25% is picked up from a fault system which runs, sits, that is, in uh, the Ridgecrest Coso Volcanic Field area. And that is the Walker Lane Fault System. The Walker Lane Fault System has only been referred to by one article that I read uh, concerning these uh, July quakes written by NASA. Now the Walker Lane Fault System is a very dangerous fault system. It stretches all the way up, nudging towards, in the north, towards the Cascadia Arc. And uh, it picks up 25% of the pressure of the subduction. And this is where we're having these quakes. There's over 60,000 quakes. I don't know, these numbers keep on changing since the July 7.1 magnitude. Now, we should not be surprised. This 7.1 July 5th quake could give a quake swarm to Yellowstone, just like what happened 20 years ago. And also, by the fact that we recently found that this area has the same magma body that runs under Yellowstone. The same exact thing, which to me, in my mind, does not put me at all uh, at ease. Not at all. Because what's happening here in this area can have a devastating effect for Yellowstone, which is not a regular volcano or volcanic field. It's a super volcano. Now, I would, let's not forget that these earthquakes are also meandering up towards Tom's Place. Whenever you hear Tom's Place, that is Long Valley Caldera. Long Valley is not, a Caldera is another supervolcano, which shares, again, the same magma body, the magma plume that goes under Yellowstone. Now, around 90% of the world's earthquakes and 81% of the world's largest earthquakes take place on the Ring of Fire. And despite knowing this area is very active, seismologists cannot, as we say, predict when or where the earthquakes will strike, besides the fact that this is a volcanic area. And it can do whatever it wants, basically. Now, some experts believe there are specific factors which can induce earthquakes, but this has not been proven by science. One of these factors inclu includes hydraulic fracturing, where deep uh, into the sea is drilling to extract energy resources. Now, a recent study in geophysical research letters has shown an increase in seismic activity in the weeks and days leading up to the majority of earthquakes, indicating that perhaps one day four shocks could be taken as early warning signs. A geologist in the Incorporated Research Institute for Seismology, Wendy Bohan, who was not part of the study, says, is very much a first step and big leap forward to improving our understanding of earthquake processes. Some feel, believe that the big one is due in California, meaning that definitely all parts of San Andreas are due. The north in Portland, Oregon, that is, uh, well, that, you know, that is definitely new for a big one. Um, the last one took place in the 1700s, which gave a ghost tsunami going all the way down to out to uh, Japan, and that's overdue. The middle is overdue, and also, of course, south, southern uh, San Andreas in the Los Angeles area is having a big quake, earthquake drought, but here we see all these very strange going-ons with the Ridgecrest Coso Volcanic Field. Unbelievable amount of, uh, what can I tell you? It's unbelievable, unbelievable. So, some believe that the big one is due in California, which would cause catastrophic damage, depending on where it hits. Uh, thank goodness the ridge crest hit in an area which was far enough from Los Angeles that uh, no one even, uh, there was no, no casualties from that, thank goodness. Um, we also, if it hits closer, if anything closer, with a bigger um, magnitude hits near Los Angeles or any major city, 
because of the fact that they have high-rise buildings, those high-rise buildings uh, are not strong enough to withstand a seven-magnitude earthquake. Now, in 1906, California came close to the big one when a magnitude 7.9 even destroyed much of San Francisco. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.